Trudeau's eight years as a prime minister have been disastrous for the Canadian tax system. Trudeau's insane tax policies made everything worse in Canada. During these eight years, even though Canadians demand Trudeau to resign, he continues his insane tax policies that affect every single sector in Canada negatively. So, let's explain the eight years of Trudeau and what he has done to Canada during this period. Trudeau's first year in 2016 was with a lot of significant changes and scandalous events. At the start of the year, he warned the provinces and announced his government's plan to set a minimum carbon tax while environment ministers were meeting in Montreal to talk about carbon pricing options. Several provinces and territories were upset. Three environment ministers left the climate discussions after Trudeau's announcement in the House of Commons. Brad Wall, the premier of Saskatchewan, called the decision a betrayal of the promised cooperative method and said the tax would ruin his province's economy. Trudeau basically told the leaders to adopt a carbon tax or cap-and-trade plan, or else the federal government would set its own tax, at least $50 a ton by 2022, and give the money back to the provinces. This happened while the Liberal government was arguing with the provinces about health care funding and showed Trudeau's intent to take control in areas where the provinces had more freedom for the last 10 years under the Conservatives. In 2016, Trudeau's first budget removed many tax credits introduced by the Conservatives, instead focusing on bigger benefits programs. For instance, the Children's Fitness Tax Credit and Children's Arts Tax Credit were halved in 2016 and gone by 2017. Parental income splitting was also stopped. Additionally, a planned tax cut for small businesses was postponed indefinitely. But from the second year of Trudeau, in 2017 it got worse. In 2017, Trudeau faced criticism from upset doctors at a town hall in Kelowna, British Columbia. The doctors were worried that planned changes to the small business tax system unfairly targeted their profession. Monica Penner, a local doctor, said that Trudeau was discouraging medical students by limiting tax strategies they could use in the future to keep more of their earnings. Trudeau responded by saying, The tax system favors the richest Canadians too much. We've seen data showing that while incomes for the middle class have stayed the same for 30 years, the richest 1% have gained more and more. He emphasized on Wednesday that his government would stick to its plan to remove tax benefits that it believed unfairly helped some wealthy small business owners. Then, in the third year of Trudeau, in 2018, it got even worse. That's when Justin Trudeau promised over $2 billion a year in carbon tax rebates as his government tried to show Canadians that pricing pollution is the best way to stop climate change. Trudeau's approach to reducing Canada's emissions was met with doubt from different sides of the carbon tax argument. Supporters of carbon pricing said Canada's proposed reductions were too small, while critics accused the government of things like trying to win votes or lying about the rebates actually covering the extra costs families would face. Trudeau argued that addressing climate change was both a moral and economic necessity to avoid leaving future generations with severe weather and widespread droughts. This tax added about $2 to the cost of a tank of gas and $8 to a monthly natural gas bill. The prices of various goods and services also rose due to the carbon tax paid by businesses. The government estimated that in 2019-20, people in affected provinces would spend between $202 and $403 more on average because of the carbon tax. In 2019, during his fourth year in office, Trudeau continued with his tax initiatives. At this time, Canada introduced a significant carbon tax in four provinces that had resisted Ottawa's efforts to address climate change leading to some unhappy provincial leaders planning to challenge this tax in court. Trudeau had previously warned for two years that he would enforce this tax on any of the 10 provinces that did not create their own climate plans by April 1st. Ontario, Canada's most populous province and crucial for the Liberals' chances in the upcoming October federal election, was among those opposing the measure. The carbon tax started at $15 per ton of pollution and was planned to increase by $7 annually until it reached $36 in 2022. This tax was also implemented in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and New Brunswick. Environment Minister Catherine McKenna announced on Twitter, As of today, it's no longer free to pollute anywhere in Canada. In 2020, during Trudeau's fifth year in office and after his re-election, he faced one of his toughest years due to the pandemic. His government announced big plans to spend a lot of money on childcare, housing, and healthcare. They plan to help pay for these expenses by taxing very rich people more, as Canada prepared for a second economically harmful wave of coronavirus. We are at a turning point, and what happens next is up to us. 
Trudeau said in a televised speech to the nation on Wednesday evening. However, the opposition parties quickly rejected these ideas from the minority government, leading to rumors that another general election might be coming soon. This process continued in 2021, during his sixth year. That's when Canada's highest court confirmed that a carbon tax is legal, giving Trudeau a win since he had made carbon pricing a key part of his climate change strategy. The Supreme Court of Canada, in a 6-3 vote, supported the federal government's decision to enforce the Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act, a 2018 law that applies a carbon tax to individual provinces. Chief Justice Richard Wagner, in the majority opinion, stated that strong federal action was necessary to address a global issue like climate change. Ontario, Alberta, and Saskatchewan had challenged the carbon tax, claiming it overstepped into their powers and violated the Canadian Constitution. However, during his seventh year in 2022, these changes didn't stop. Trudeau introduced a one-time extra tax on Canada's major banks and permanently raised their income tax rate. According to Freeland's budget, this move would make banks and insurance companies pay an extra $4.8 billion in taxes over the next five years. The new taxes were almost guaranteed to be put in place because Trudeau had gained the support of a left-leaning opposition party to pass the budget. However, Trudeau's decision to increase taxes on the financial sector faced strong opposition from business leaders, who argued that it would reduce the money available for loans and negatively affect how investors view Canada. And last year was Trudeau's eighth year as a prime minister, and the Canadian economy is not doing that well after eight years of Trudeau. For example, Trudeau warned grocery stores that they might face new taxes if they didn't help control rising food prices. He mentioned that leaders from the five biggest supermarket chains, including Walmart and Costco, would be expected to come up with a plan to lower prices before Thanksgiving. With his popularity decreasing, Trudeau also announced that the sales tax would be removed for building new rental apartments to help with living costs. After eight years as Canadian Prime Minister, Trudeau has been criticized for his tax policies, mainly because people feel there hasn't been enough improvement in making taxes fair and reducing the tax load on the middle class. Critics say that although he promised to make the tax system more fair, the tax changes under his government have often been too timid or ineffective in closing the gap between the rich and the poor. His approach to carbon taxes, aimed at environmental goals, has also been controversial. Critics argue that it unfairly impacts lower and middle-income people without giving them enough money back or other forms of relief.